Hello everyone. We have come to the fifth week of our course. In this session, for the first video, I will discuss methods to solve various type of equation. So let's just start. To solve an equation means to find all values of the variable that satisfies the equation. When we have two equations that have exactly the same solution, they are called equivalent. And to get an equivalent equation, we do either of the following on both sides of the equality sign. We add or subtract by the same number or multiply or divide by the same number different from zero. So, for example, we have 3x plus 10 equals to x plus 4. So, what is the value of x that satisfies this equality? The first step is we do subtracting a same number. Here we want to isolate the x, so we subtract x from both sides. And this is what we do, and this is what we get. Uh, the second step, we subtract minus 10 on both sides. So this is the result. And then divide both by 2. And voila, this is our solution for x. What if we are faced with more complicated equation? Here we have parenthesis and fraction. What we do is we, get, we begin by multiplying the parenthesis, then we multiply both sides with the lowest common denominator. Example, here we have the following equation. So what we do first is we multiply the parenthesis in both of the sides. From the left side, we have this result, and from the right side, we have this result. And then we make it simpler, and this is the end of result of multiplying the parenthesis. Then we, we multiply by the lowest common denominator. Here we have 2 and 6 as the lowest, as the denominator. So the lowest denominator is 6, thus we multiply by 6. From this term, we multiply by 6, we get this term, and we continue our solving process by gathering the terms, we get 55p minus equals to minus 5. And then divide both sides by 55, and this is the end result, the solution for p. The next one is if we have a quotient function or equation as a fraction, we must look at the denominator. It may cause the value of a variable makes the expression of the equation undefined. Thus, that value is not allowed. For example, we have this equation. We see that the denominator, the common denominator is z minus 5. And we cannot have a fraction where the denominator is equal to 0. Thus, z minus 5 may not equal to 0 implies z, z may not be equal to 5. So, to solve the equation from our example, first, we do multiplication of the same number on both sides. We use the smallest common denominator, which is 3 times z minus 5. And this is the result. Uh, and we simplify it, we get 4z equals to 20, and this is the result from our uh, from the process of solving the equation. But from our first restriction, z may not be equals to 5. Thus, we can conclude that this equation do not have a unique solution. For solving a quadratic function, we have two alternatives. The first one is through factoring. If we have x1 and x2 as the roots of this equation, x squared plus bx plus q equals to 0, thus we try to find x1 and x2 where x1 times x2 equals the q and x1 plus x2 equal to minus p. 
Here we have an example, x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals to 0. First, we look at the factor of 2, which would be simple. The factor of 2 is 1 and 2. Second, uh, 1 and 2 must be equal to minus 3. Thus, we take it as minus 1 and minus 3. From the equation, we, we, we factor this equation to become x minus 1 times x minus 2. And thus, the roots of the e equation is just x equals 2, 1 and x equals 2, 2. That is the solution for this example. Another alternative to solve the quadratic function is through a formula. So for a quadratic function, ax squared plus bx plus c equals to 0, and we assume that a is not equal to 0, and b squared minus 4 minus times ac is greater than 0, thus the roots of the equation can be solved through this formula. Thus, taking the previous example here, we have, we define the a will be equals to 1, and the b is minus 3, and the c is equal to 2. To solve the x and x1 and x2, the roots of the equation, we just plug this number to the formula. This is the form, and then if we simplify, we get this form, and we have x1 equals to 2, and x2 equals to 1. Just similar to what we do, what, uh, what we get when we do factoring.